Now, watches of Switzerland, the UK's biggest seller of luxury timepieces, watches, has gained as much as 17% in its debut trading day in London. Well, we're joined by Watches of Switzerland Chief Executive Brian Duffy. First of all, Mr. Duffy, congratulations on the first day of trade. So many have failed on their first day. Yep. You're up some 17%. Yes. Was the price right? Could you have asked more? Where's the pent-up demand coming from? Well, we, we were pretty confident of getting a, a good uh, debut overall. Uh, we've had a great uh, process. We clearly were you know, nicely over... Uh, uh, oversubscribed overall. I think the pricing was recognised from the beginning as being very responsible as, as the comments that we heard. So, Does very uh, responsible mean too low? I mean, I guess if you're going up uh, 15, 17, you would arguably say that. We are very happy with the valuation of the business that was done and obviously very happy we've had a nice debut. OK, well, what does it mean for expansion in the US? Last time you were on when you announced that you were IPO, we, we were talking a little bit about that. <coughs> yep. Have you made plans? We are already in the US, so we, uh, we, uh, we acquired a business in uh, Florida back in uh, October 17, market leader in Florida called Mayors. We've opened in the Wynn Resort in Las Vegas. Uh, we've opened in uh, New York in Green Street in Soho. And then most recently we opened in uh, the Hudson Yards, a huge development in the west side oh. of uh, Manhattan. So we're having a good experience in the, in the US. We love the market. We've got great teams there. We've got all of our systems in place and, and uh, we're trading well. Joining us now, Brian Duffy, Francine of the most dangerous store Tom. at the Royal Exchange. Very, you know, I look at the business, Brian, and it's always been a fractured business. You are a marketing whiz with Polo from years ago with Ralph Lauren and all that as well. How are you going to market watches and differentiate yourself in an exceptionally crowded field? Just as one example, how are you going to differentiate yourself from the cozy corner they've got at Harrods in watches? Well, you know, Harrods do a great job uh, with everything that they do, of course, including watches. Um, but we are a specialist. Uh, we've been in the industry a long, long time. People uh, uh, want to know that you're getting uh, expertise and heritage, you're getting choice. Um, so, you know, we, we do well against Harrods, but Harrods, of course, and Selfridge is, you know, very good retailers of luxury watches here in London. Yeah. Um, how, how we differentiate ourselves is that um, we're very technologically advanced. Uh, we're very, very active in digital <clears throat> media. Uh, we have right. uh, stores that right. um, offer a very welcoming and uh, browsable yeah. environment, and we appeal to a younger audience, actually. Yeah, the Sky Dweller Ever Rose Gold would be something for the younger audience. Speaking of the younger audience, if you strap an Hermes strap on an Apple Watch, I guess that's watches of luxury or something like that. How are you going to battle against the Apple Watch? I mean, honestly, it's, um, there's a lot of hype about it. It's a very, very different uh, product category than, than luxury watches. You know, there are cheaper ways of telling the time and buying a beautiful Rolex. Um, and, you know, and it says much more about you than, 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 than certainly how you're effectively <coughs> going to tell the time. There's been no impact on luxury watches from, uh, from smart watches, Apple or any other. Uh, we've done research that says that only 1% of people who own both regard one as a replacement for the other. Um, so, honestly, it's, uh, it's hype, but it really hasn't been any impact in our market whatsoever. Um, do you have any concerns about, you know, having access to some of these uh, timepieces if there was a no-deal Brexit? Uh, I mean, no, it's Switzerland, of course, so it's not going to be directly impacted in, in terms the arrangements are all in place between the government, so there should be no fracture so the, or impact whatsoever. I mean, do, do you worry about sterling volatility, pound volatility? Uh, I, mean, if, I mean, what happens if there is any volatility, it's relatively short-lived. Uh, we don't have direct exposure. We buy in sterling for the UK, we buy in dollars for the US, so the exposure is yeah. with the brands. So the brands would always correct pricing to effectively recover margin, so you really don't get sustained periods of big price Difference. Right. Brian, a general question, and, and I've, I've gotten this from people over the years. I think there's a mystery of how Switzerland does it. How do they put out so many luxury units from, say, $5,000 out to the Patex of the world? Where's the manpower come from? Where, how do they actually operationally deliver their watches worldwide? You're looking at uh, particularly a 20th century of, uh, of investment and tradition. Uh, you're looking at great, uh, great schools of watchmakers and you're looking at huge investment by um, the major player being, uh, being Rolex, uh, uh, also Patek, as you mentioned, the Richemont Group, the Swatch Group, LV Group. Yeah. So it's a hugely invested, uh, very, very advanced um, technology that's there. Right. They do a great job in product. They do an amazing job in the... 
on marketing. Um, the reason it's in yeah. Switzerland, uh, you, may, you may be interested to know, was uh, thanks right. to John Calvin right. uh, when, it, when he banned the wedding of jewellery. Well, Brian, uh, Patek has the museum in Geneva. How do they hold off the big conglomerates? There's been a generational change at Patek. How do they hold off the big fancy conglomerates? You know, they really occupy uniquely a wonderful horological space. Um, they, they are from 20,000, as you said, up to you know 800,000 other Patek watches. Many, many of them with the long waiting lists. Um, they, they manage. Uh, development, they manage uh, rarity, exclusivity and craftsmanship at the end of the day at the very, very highest level.